Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy, and today we're going to talk about boat fenders, or bumpers, or whatever you want to call these things. Today we're talking about fenders. No, not those kind of fenders. No, not those kind of fenders either. But boat fenders, like these. So a lot of people call these things bumpers, and I get it. I mean, it, you know what? If you have a boat and you call them bumpers, that's fine. It's your boat, you're the captain, you call it whatever you want to call it. When you go to buy them in the store, you're probably going to have to ask for a fender. The reason they're called fenders is because they come from an old, old English word from several hundred years ago. Fender, if you think about it, how it's evolved is defend and to fend off. We've heard about people trying to fend off something or trying to defend something. These are called fenders because they fend your boat off of the pier, or they fend it off of another boat. And so that's where the term fender came from. It's an old English word, and that's why they're called fenders. Americans calling front wings on their car a fender, I, that's just what we decided to call it at some point in time. And it's quite possible that we call them fenders because they fend off damage to your engine compartment. That's probably how that term came about on cars originally. Uh, and in England, they called them wings, and probably Australia too. If you launch at a boat ramp, and you launch and you hop in your boat and you take off and then you come back and put it back on your trailer, you may never need fenders. But if you park at a place where there's a lot of other boats or you're parking along different kind of marinas and bulkheads and things like that, you need fenders. If you're rafting up to other boats out in the river, all getting together, hanging out, you need fenders. What they do is they just cushion between your boat and the boat next to you. So if this is my boat, and I got my fender hanging on here, and this is your boat, we have this cushioning between us, neither of our boats are going to get marked up, scarred up, or anything. Most boats have a rub rail on them, but the rub rails can be at a different height from another boat, and so those rub rails might not touch each other. The rub rails, rub rails work fine for when you're pulling out of your slip at the marina, and if there's a piling and your boat goes to rub up against it, that rub rail works just fine. Fenders are for whenever you're sitting parked. So one important thing about fenders is it's poor boat etiquette to leave your fenders out while you're underway. So if you put your fender outside of your boat while you're parked at the marina or at the restaurant or wherever, and as you pull away, you need to pull these fenders back into your boat, not leave them hanging out. It's just poor boat etiquette to leave your fenders out. I don't know why. I think maybe just because it looks bad, makes you look like a rookie. I don't understand. I don't know why, but I just want to give you the heads up so that way people don't look at you and go like, why did you leave your fenders out? The other important thing too is that with a fender, if you notice, this one here has the, the loop knot tied off like this, and the length of rope that's attached to it is approximately four feet. Four feet of rope seems to be a pretty decent length to be able to tie off to either like a leg of your bimini top, wrap it around a cleat, if that's the appropriate place to put it, or along a rail on the outside of your boat. And one of the things that I do is if I am getting ready to fuel up my boat or I know I'm going to a restaurant, I will pre-tie these off at a couple of places along the side that I know that I'm going to be needing my fenders. And then whenever I get to my destination, all I have to do is flop them over the side and then adjust the length appropriately for where I'm pulling up. That way my fenders are there and they're accessible and they're handy. And I'm not asking somebody who's out there boating with me to try to tie off a fender who has no idea how to tie off a fender or what a fender is. And so I'll be telling them, you know, the big rubber padded thing there, throw that over the side. If you're traveling around with other people who are not boaters, they don't necessarily know what to do with this. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to subscribe 
and ring that bell to get notified about future videos. Fenders also come in different shapes and sizes. There are some that are inflatable. These ones here are not. I don't think you can reinflate these particular ones. And what's important is to get ones that are sized correctly for your boat. Uh, these ones here I had purchased with my 19 foot runabout that I had and they worked perfect. Um, and they actually work quite well with my new 23 and a half foot boat. And it actually came with fenders. It came with a couple of really big blue fenders that look like they'd be good for rafting up next to other boats. And then it had built in two fenders up in the bow. Uh, by built in, I mean there was a lid and you open this lid and, and there was a fender in each side with a rope. And so they're like in a nice little sort of compartments right up at the bow. So one of the tricks with fenders is being able to tie them off correctly. And I'm gonna show you how to tie off a fender correctly. When you tie them off correctly, they're pretty easy to adjust and they're pretty easy to untie whenever you're getting ready to leave. So I have a pole here in front of me that I'm gonna use to show you how we tie off a fender. Imagine this is the rail on my boat. So I'm standing inside, the water's out here, and this is a rail. The way you hang a fender correctly is you hang it over your rail, and then you wrap your rope around like this, and then you bring it through like this. And now my fender is hung correctly. The idea is that this is loose enough that I can easily adjust it by lifting up on this and pulling the other rope down to adjust the height to get it to be exactly the right height. But it's also secure enough that it's not going to come down because the weight of the fender isn't that heavy. All right, so that's tied onto there. You wanna see it again? I'll do it again nice and slow. You lay the fender over the rail. With the fender laying over the rail, you take your rope and you loop it around like this. And then you bring it up through. Like so. And then I can adjust the height of my fender and it will stay. So if there's a big bulkhead wall out here and the bow of your boat is way down here, then you would loosen this up so that it was between the rub rail of your boat and that bulkhead. So sometimes it's going to be hanging low and sometimes that'll be up high. The advantage of this particular knot is, as you see, it's very easy to adjust once you have it in place, but it's strong enough that this is not going to work its way down because the fenders do not move around that much. So whether you call them bumpers or fenders or those inflatable things that you put on the outside of your boat, it's important to have a couple of them. Make sure they have a length of rope attached to them and that you have them on your boat and they're accessible. And if you know that you're going to be pulling up to something else, pre-tie them off somewhere so that way they're at least close to where you're going to be using them and they're already started so that way as you're tying off it's just a matter of throwing them over the side and adjusting them. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe out there on the water and have a great day.